guys, the kids and I are at the Fix and Flip renovation house again, and we're going to be working on pulling off some of the trim today. And one thing with trim is, if you're careful, lots of times trim can be saved and just repainted and put back on. This trim in this house is new. We can tell that it was just put in. It hasn't even been painted yet. And so we're going to be extra careful when we take it off. We're going to label where each thing came from because we can just take it off, label the back, and then put it right back on, and we shouldn't even really have to cut anything. There you did. There you are, buddy. Mm -hmm. So if you need a good kid job, a great one is to have them label the backs of the trim as you pull them off. Because if you just put what room they're in and put numbers, one, two, three, four, all the way around the room, then you can just keep them in piles in some other room and pull them out when you're ready to put them back on. We successfully removed all the trim in this room without breaking any of it. And we labeled all of it. We got a bunch of trim taken out. That was a slow process because we had to be careful. Anytime you're trying to save something that you're taking out, it's way slower. And then we've spent the last half hour cleaning everything up, taking all the junk outside, sweeping. In a renovation, there's even more cleanup than there is in a build. It's insane. The next thing that I'm doing here today is I'm going to plan out the master bathroom. We have it almost completely demoed. We just need to get the shower enclosure out. That's the last thing. So I'm going to make a real definite plan today, take measurements, and figure out exactly what we're going to need. And maybe in a couple days, I'll be able to go pick up our supplies so that we can get working on putting that bathroom back together. So first, this is the door to get into our master bathroom. We thought about moving it over just, you know, one slot right there, especially because it's a pocket door. It would be really easy to just move the door right there because there's already a big opening in there where the pocket door is. But we decided against that because if we moved the door there, then you would walk straight in to the toilet and we'd rather not have that happen. So you walk over here, we're gonna leave this this uh, pocket door in. Right here, we're trying not to move very many um, plumbing or electrical things. So this space right here will still be our vanity. I'm gonna measure that and figure out what size we need there. Then we'll have the mirror up there. We're gonna replace those lights up there and get them get some nice ones in there. There's gonna be lots of drywall patching and fixing in here. So I'm gonna um, take record of all of those. We're leaving the toilet right there so that we don't have to move the drains. We went under the house and those two drains would have been a really big pain to move. The shower, thankfully, is not gonna be an issue. It's really easy access right under the house right there. We're just gonna move the plumbing from this wall into that wall so that we can have that entire thing shower. I'm going to measure that and then I'm going to price out whether we want to put a prefab base in there and then just tile the walls or if we want to have a tile guy come and build us our own um, base so that we can tile the whole thing. So the way that I'm budgeting this house is really different than when we built our own house because with a renovation you it's really hard to know what you're gonna find once you're taking things apart so I have a low number and a high number for each thing that we're doing in this house so for this master bathroom my low number is 3,000 if I can stay at or below 3,000 I'm gonna feel awesome about it and we'll be on budget to stay really low on our expenses in this house um, my high number for this bathroom is 5,000 that's like the number that I have to stay below. And if I cannot stay below that number, then we have to make adjustments somewhere else in the house. So I have a three to $5,000 budget on this bathroom, which seems like a really big variance, but bathrooms are tough. You never know whether you're gonna have to tear out extra walls when you're moving um, plumbing. That can be a really big deal. We're hoping, I mean, this looks good so far, 
So I think we'll be able to stick really close to that three, maybe $3,500 range. Here's the breakdown. The shower is gonna be the biggest part. I'm hoping we can do the shower whole area, including all the hardware and tile and everything that we need to in there for $1,500. I think that's a good number for our shower area. Then we've got a toilet, which you can do those for around 200. Um, we've got a vanity, which I mean, vanities are all over the place, but I think we can do one in this space because it's pretty small for three or $400. Um, and then we've actually already got a mirror that I think will fit nicely there. We'll, I'm going to have to measure and double check that. And then we've got, you know, a light fixture, which again, you can do cheap or you can do expensive. Um, I guess maybe that'll be one of the last things that we figure out where we're at in our budget before we do that. We've got the drywall, which is going to need a lot of patches, um, but that doesn't, that's not very expensive. It's just extra, you know, a lot of extra work. We've got trim around the windows, which I think we already have in this house. They left a lot of trim. Um, the door is already installed. That's a new pocket door. So we just need to trim around the pocket door. We've got drywall on this back side of that wall too that needs put in. But all in all, I'm feeling really good about our $3,000 master bathroom budget. Oh, I forgot the floor. But the floor, I mean, that's simple. We have so much tile in this house, um, extra boxes of tile and from our build that I think we can find something. And even if we can't, you can find really cheap tile as long as you're willing to do it yourself, which we are. Um, we should be able to do this floor for, oh, maybe a hundred bucks, especially because all of that is new cement board already put down. We just need to replace that piece over there and then probably do a little bit around the shower after we take that out. This is the tile that was left behind in this house that's almost all savable. So I would love to hear any of your comments on what you like um, and what might work in our master bathroom. A lot of it doesn't match but plenty of it does hi buddy so i'm gonna take a really slow look at this tile and let me know what you think we've got long and skinny here a lot of that some of them are different colors so that's a little tricky we've got two different types of um white kind of hex tile there i really like that one um the lower ones are cleaner and in better shape that last one was pretty bad there's a few of these. They're kind of a gray. I hate this one, but maybe some other people might like it. There's not very much of it anyways. I also hate that one. <laughs> then there's there's quite a bit of this good looking brown. It's pretty plain, but it's nice. Yep, just a second, buddy. And we've got all different sizes of this like shiny. I don't know if it's all called subway tile, but there's big ones. These are more than uh, more than 12 inches. There's small ones and there's medium sized ones, a whole bunch of them. All of those stacks are white, different size subway tiles. Then we've got this kind of plain brown, just 12 by 12 square. We've got, that's just a dirty one back there. We've got this, it's a gray, um, kind of shiny, shimmery, one and then this one is almost like a glass look see-through a little bit and it's kind of a gray color really similar to that but it's got the glass on top mm -hmm. and then these boxes over here i really like this one actually it's got a little bit of texture i'm kind of a texture person when it comes to tile see that and we've got quite a few boxes of those so that's there's only three of those left um they were going to use them downstairs but so we've got lots of options here. So help me out guys. What ones look good, good together. And if you have any recommendations on what would look good on that master bathroom floor or in the t um, shower, any of that, I'd love to hear what you guys think. So I ran outside to yank some of the siding off because we need to see what's underneath it and what we're dealing with. And I'm actually pretty pleased with what I found. Let me show you what it's looking like. Cause we're going to be pulling all the siding off um, this next week or two and then putting all new board and batten up so here's what it looks like see I just pulled off this corner right here just to see what we were dealing with and what you can see there is a vine that has grown underneath it which we already knew because it was growing out of the top of the house over there 
Well, you know, demo is so much fun that I just kept going and going and going and going for a second. Couldn't stop. Just pulling it off, but seriously, just wanted to show you guys, I'm like really thrilled with what good shape it, this house is in underneath the siding. I mean, this place was built in 1950, and it is, I mean, other than some spiders, it's in really good shape. So that's great. Hopefully that just means this will be as simple as pulling all the siding off and putting new stuff on. I mean, knock on wood, I hope I didn't jinx that. But anyways, um, it might be a little bit of a different story in that front half of the house because that up there was the part that was built first and then this back part was the add-on. I'm gonna get all these loud hooligans home to our other house where we can scream out in the country. <laughs> See you guys.